I found myself in India. My husband Eli had gone before me and had written letters back to me. I was in California visiting at that time saying, you have to come here. This is the real deal. This is bliss itself. And so within a month I was in India on the banks of the Ganga in Hardwar. And I, I was welcomed. My teacher said, come in, you're welcome. And I felt that. He didn't know me. He didn't know if I was a good practitioner or if I was even a good person. But he said, welcome. And I received his welcome. And in an instant, I knew I was in the right place. He asked me what I had come for. And the word freedom came out. And he said, oh good, you're, you're in the right place. And I said, so tell me what to do. Because by then I had been told what to do by many different teachers and many different paths. And I had tried to do what they had said. And it had great experiences, but somehow I had just missed the, the complete the completion, the resolution of self-realization. And he said, just do nothing. Just stop. Just be still. And at first I heard this as a kind of physical invitation, as a, I had been on meditation retreats, and so I understood that not to move, not to, not to scratch an itch, just to really be still. But I allowed the, the invitation from him, the command from him, just to stop, be still, to penetrate deeper. And I realized he was pointing to the activity of my mind, had nothing to do with my body. My body could fidget or move, or heartbeat, perspire, emotions appear and disappear. It was the activity of my mind, what I did mentally with what was happening in my body, or what was happening emotionally, or what was happening circumstantially. And when I really heard him, I was able to, to be still to stop. And if you are willing to be still, to stop, immediately a great peace is discovered, a radiance of being. Of course then I had questions of, oh is this it, or how do I keep this, or what do I do with this, and, and again he said, just stop, just be still. I realized that I could Trust the stillness. Again, not as a dogma or a religion, but as inquiry. I could actually trust it and discover, does it have a bottom? Does it have a top? Is there anything separate from this? And I'm still discovering that this stillness is everywhere, regardless of emotion or noise. Papaji's teacher was Ramana Maharshi. And the, the most important thing that he said to Papaji, what he said to Papaji that stopped Papaji in his tracks, was that gods that appear and disappear are useless. Find out what is unmoving. Find out what is always here. And in that, Papaji discovered this truth of himself. Ramana was a saint who lived in Tiruvannamalai most of his life and was a sadhu, typical Indian sadhu, and in that he had nothing to do with, with business. He, he was celibate all of his life. And so people would often come to him and say, oh, but how can I, as a householder and someone who has to hold, keep a job and deal with children, or deal with the world, experience what you experience when you get to just be in your cave. And to me, Papaji was the answer to that, because he was very much a householder. He had been, when the British were in India, he had been in the army, he had been a mining engineer, he'd, he'd gone into Pakistan to, to save his family during the partition of India and Pakistan, and he had lived very much in the world and yet he could still point to changeless presence. 
of stillness that is oneself. So when I got to Papaji and I saw him living a life, having emotions, having opinions, and yet being true to something that is so much closer than any emotion or opinion, I knew it was possible. And then in his command to be, to be still, to stop, I discovered it is reality. It's not only possible, it's here. It's not something that has to be acquired or reached. It's a surrender.